Hello everybody, this is Anis Kanya from Virtuality and today I'm going to make a very special interview to Izzy Lander from Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. So Izzy, welcome. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. This interview is dedicated for education. So you will tell me that you have some experience and some vision about education in the future and the impact that virtual worlds will have uh, in pedagogics and in the students. So if you could tell me more about it, please. Yeah, actually, I've always had an interest in distance education. And in the United States, that is uh, where many of the universities are heading towards, uh, is to service, and especially in the economic uh, condition that we have, more and more students are not able to attend university during the record times. So many universities and other uh, educational uh, systems and institutions are trying to find ways to enable students to be able to work and attend uh, school at the same time. And one of the ways to do that has always been distance education. Uh, but in the past, distance ed uh, or education tends to be a very static uh, type of system where you might use a system for uh, that communicates in email or students can upload and download files, uh, which is very archaic uh, in this, you know, the 21st century. So what, and one of the other issues with distance ed education uh, in the way that it was done in the past is many students actually do not complete their program because, and one of the driving factors is they don't feel that they have any connection with the institution, the instructor, or their fellow classmate, uh, which is something they normally would have if it was in a face-to-face -face environment where they're sitting inside a classroom. Um, so research has found that many students actually give up uh, rather quickly. Uh, because they feel that they're actually alone in, in that digital space that we used to call the learning man management systems like Blackboard or Moodle, uh, Sky or Desire to Learn. So I think that's where the, the power of virtual environments like Second Life uh, lies. It, the virtual environment allows the user to create this presence that they don't feel in the more traditional distance ed, uh, systems. Um, as you probably already seen, uh, when users log into Second Life, they have an avatar, and very quickly, users actually identify with the avatar instead of seeing the avatar as a uh, second object that they just control. Uh, my personal experience has been that I've seen users go in and within a week or two uh, self-identify with their avatar and there's really no different. Uh, what the avatars undergo is what the users actually feel. So that in itself is it's evident that there is a presence uh, of the users in the environment uh, because there is no disconnect between the avatar and the user themselves. Um, and myself, I found that to be true also because uh, although I'm an educational technologist, I have not been very active in social media usage. Uh, for example, um, Facebook. Uh, I do not use Facebook because I just don't feel that I have any connection with the people uh, that I see in the photos on the walls of Facebook. But when I'm inside Second Life, um, I just take on this, this, this presence and feel that all the people I interact with are no different than the ones that I would if I, they were in my office at my campus or at the cafe when I walk out and, and go to the cafe and have some coffee. So, and that really is what convinced me that Second Life or virtual environments, uh, other virtual worlds that we have now, OpenSim, uh, Reaction Grid, let's say, they are providing that presence for the users on an online environment that would be very conducive to, I believe, uh, more effective online education than what we've had in the past. Well, this is very interesting. So you think that the people have an identity here, which is representing them by the, doesn't matter if in the web 2.0 or even here in Second Life, an identity which is represent us in the immersive worlds and in the, in the cyber worlds uh, by itself. Absolutely. And I've seen personally myself and, and in others that I work with uh, in doing working on projects in Second Life, um, the users identify with their avatar. 
And of course, when sitting alive, the virtual environment allows you the freedom to express yourself or identify yourself in many forms. Uh, but, and that in itself is, is evident. Because oftentimes when you ask someone, why did you choose that particular avatar? Um, you won't get any answers like, oh, it was theirs, so I just used it. Uh, and you also notice that when users get into the environment, once they learn the, the graphical interface or the tools, they will very quickly modify their avatar to be uh, representative of their ideal representation of themselves. Uh, so, so individuals are expressing themselves through their avatar. Um, and I don't think that would happen if they didn't really feel an identity with the avatar or with the environment uh, or others that are in the environment with them at the time. Very impressive. Which field are you working on to be in the future in Second Life? Because um, as far as I understand, you have a vision to work in the future here in the university. So what is the vision you're getting? Artists? Scientists. Uh, actually, my vision is interdisciplinary across the entire curriculum because I see that virtual environments such as Second Life offers you the possibility to, to actually engage and conduct education in the environment as you would in, second, in the real world. Um, in particular, uh, one area that I have been pushing um, on my campus in speaking with faculty members is uh, with our college of business. Uh, as you well know, in Second Life, there is a commerce. There, there is commerce. There are users who create content. They sell the content for other users um, to use. As this facility you've seen here, uh, I've created uh, some of this, but some of the, for example, the trees and the foliage and decoration uh, was not created by me. And so those were created by other users in Second Life. And we would purchase those to build this, this space that you, you see here for our conference. Uh, so likewise, other users are building content and then they are consumed by users who want to have a home, uh, vehicles or apparatuses that they use in Second Life, decorations, uh, landscaping components. So you have this economy that is thriving in Second Life. And I really feel that a college of business can provide for the student the entire business model experience, uh, which would normally be very costly if you were to do this in you know, a regular uh, at the university level. Uh, because if you were to have a group of students, let's say, do a project in which they produce research, number one, uh, research a product, uh, produce prototyping, and test marketing and, and placement of the product, and also uh, identify their their market segment. Mm -hmm. That would take a very long time and would take a great amount of, of financial resources. To Second Life, you can task students with the same objectives to identify the product, manufacture the product, either they can manufacture it themselves or they can purchase it from someone else who can give them the base material. And then they will have to determine how and where they're going to sell the product and what prices they're going to have to set the product at to sell uh, to make a profit and make the business actually function and, and become profitable and sustainable. So that one example right there is, is something to me, I think is a great benefit to almost any university environment where the students uh, will get the real world experience because they're interacting with other users who happen just to be on the other side of the avatar. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. Uh, gives you the possibilities and, and um, probably that you probably would not be able to replicate in the real world. Um, I don't know, you probably know that some of the Ivy League schools, the very renowned schools that we have in the United States, actually give student, uh, groups of students tens of thousands of dollars to work on such projects. So you can see right away for a small university, that is not a viable option. Um, so Second Life, I feel, is a, is a very powerful tool that will allow you to be able to do that. And of course, with human interactions in Second Life, there are so many other things you can do in the liberal arts, um, you know, sociology classes. Um, you can even do music. I've attended uh, music sessions that were conducted by very renowned music instructors in the classical music uh, area. I think you're only limited by your vision. Um, the ability to be open-minded and not treat it as a game. And I think uh, once we get past that hurdle, we're only limited by our own imagination. Yeah, very interesting. 
because uh, it's, a, it's a very high vision where you can be close to a very simulation but it's in real life in a very small place where everyone can actually interact. Absolutely, and especially just like our example for you and I, uh, how often will I get a chance to speak or work with someone in a different country? Uh, I can tell you prior to Second Life, I may know two people or I may meet two people in a year that are from countries other than the United States. But ever since I have started working in Second Life, I've uh, become friends with people from the Netherlands, uh, Great Britain, South America, Brazil, you know, the Far East. Um, it just opens up the world. Uh, the logistics of uh, even an exchange program uh, at my university, we have a study abroad program, and there are there are many barriers to that, and there are many complicated issues associated with that. Uh, but an environment like Second Life, um, well, just think about it. You don't need a visa. You don't need to uh, <laughs> to buy air airfare tickets. Uh, you don't need to worry about where you live. Um, but yet, you're still able to have a very global exchange of ideas and philosophies uh, and cross-cultural learning. The, the other thing that I would like to do is about the emotion and the motivation that the students could reach during the activities and homeworks and challenge that the teacher could put in the during the class time, for example. I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, Myself, as an educational and technologist, and also uh, gone through the under, uh, the graduate program, have seen where in the more traditional um, distance education or, or e-learning, many students feel that they're just given a task, and what they do is they go out on their own and they work on those tasks, and then they submit uh, whatever is required by an instructor. And for online, it's very difficult for faculty to get students to engage with each other outside of the class time. And that's even true with face-to-face -face classes where they're sitting inside a classroom. But environments such as Second Life allows users to directly and synchronously interact with each other. Um, you don't have that with any other distance ed programs or systems. Um, if you use, let's say, Blackboard or Moodle, again, like I said, the, the most synchronous or real-time communication you may have is a chat room in which the participants are basically typing messages back and forth into a open discussion area. Um, but that gets very difficult to, to follow. Um, and you really can't do anything. And by do anything, I mean you cannot physically interact. Whereas with Second Life, via the avatars, individuals can interact with each other. Uh, for instance, example, I can actually walk over and push you. So, you know, and that's what creates the presence. A presence means just not that I am using the content, but I am also participating and there is an interaction between myself and the environment and others in the environment. So, um, the feedback that I've, I've heard from others who've actually conducted class or have done research in Second Life is that students really like that they are able to interact with others in their performing their class activities. Um, and that's why instructors have set up design course instructions around activities where students would actually have to work together in group. Um, and the environment facilitates that. So if you can imagine if they, the students were given a task to tour a facility and then provide feedback or, or um, a summary of their experience. It's very easy in Second Life to show that each individual may experience the exercise differently and they be able to share that. And it will be in real time. Role playing is a very good example of that. There are many instructors who go into Second Life and have their students role play um, to get a, a deeper understanding of the activity that they're engaged in. And you really can't do that in a non-virtual 3D environment. Yes, um, I totally agree with you. I think that is missing from the Web 2.0 where you can interact, but the emotion to be with another person, that the social environment can help you to feel like you're into a special place um, and you have distance. I think the Second Life is a very good opportunity to do it.
Yes, I would like to ask you if you have any recommendation for future teachers or universities that would like to get involved in, in this kind of project, in the immersive worlds where simulation can take part and where interaction with just not with the, just only with the classroom, but actually with the whole people that is involved with education, what it will be? I think if, if I were to recommend anything, the first I would recommend is that it should be seen as a tool to help you achieve what you can with other existing technology and to be open-minded about all the possibilities. Do not put up uh, barriers ahead of time by putting limiting factors into it because oftentimes prior, prior to getting into the environment and experiencing it yourself, it is very difficult to identify the benefits and the capability or, or what the environment will bring out in what you can do. I've actually had faculty who I've introduced Second Life to and they would not understand. Uh, it was very difficult for them to make the connection or the leap from their own self-existence and this seemingly, uh, you know, to the computer program and even communication, they don't understand how that is working or why you would even talk to someone that you see as a figure in second life. So that would be the very first recommendation I would make. And the second recommendation I would make is to be successful. You need to prepare your users because currently the learning curve is quite steep for second life. Now, for myself, I've never found it to be that way, although that is one of the, the comments that I often hear from users who have difficulties is that it is so much to learn in a very short amount of time. So I, I think with any major commitment to any new technology, especially something that is very foreign to many, especially our instructors who are, are you know, of an older generation or, or what we call non-traditional students, who are not the 18 to 22 uh, age range, uh, being in a virtual environment is very foreign to them. So uh, one of the top priority for any institution or, or group that wants to use it, this type of technology, uh, really should prepare their users ahead of time. Um, so you can prepare by having uh, them watch videos, uh, having a guided sessions in which you have a very experienced user uh, walk them through an orientation instead of letting them just go to orientation on their own. Um, because oftentimes, uh, just like playing any other game that are, are very complex, if you have a very short amount of time and you don't have guidance, then it can cause the users to feel overwhelmed. And that may lead them to not adopt or, or be very uh, receptive to the technology. I agree with you. I think that the user needs, need to be a special train and a special instruction before any, any, any anything happen. Uh, that's one last question be before we finish the interview. Okay. Uh, is that, uh, the, the, have you noticed that the students from other universities have posted their works in Second Life in their blogs or in Facebook or in their social network that are very famous to use right now? I'm not aware of too many, but then again, I have not um, had the pleasure uh, to to be involved with many uh, successful programs in Second Line. But I am aware of several university who are very heavily invested in Second Life. Um, within my own state, there is Texas State Technical College um, who have had uh, the fortunate blessing of having a president, a university, uh, university president, college president, who was very open-minded to new technology. So when Second Life was first introduced, he basically gave them all the resources and the administrative support for them to build a team, for the team to develop a very solid program for their college. And that college now actually has gotten to the point where they can provide consultation uh, to other universities looking into uh, using virtual environments. Another one is uh, from Boise State University. They have an ed tech program and that's led by uh, Dr. Lisa Dolly, whom I met at a conference uh, for using technology in education before. 
And I know that they have very strong programs in which students would do work and post the work in Second Life. And I would also recommend, um, I believe it is the University of North Australia. <clears throat> they, and Australia is also a country that has actually adopted or, or welcomed Second Life as, a, as an educational tool. And I know some of those universities, they use it uh, quite a bit for the, uh, their art program. So you will see many students producing very complex yet simple artwork that they display in Second Life. So those are just a few examples of students actually uh, creating, doing work, and then having them exist in Second Life uh, that the public can, can actually uh, view. And just to go the opposite direction, from uh, Minnesota in the United States, who actually um, was working in, in Second Life, and some of her Second Life photography was so good and profound that a, uh, an organization in Germany the, the artwork and had asked her and flown her to Germany to give a presentation on her work in Second Life to a real live audience. So that's another example of work that was done in Second Life that has now become a, a very well-known piece of work that has been adopted in the real world. And I see you're wearing a special outfit. What is it? Yes. Actually, this is a samurai outfit that I use um, for the virtual world best practice in education conference that we just had a few weeks ago. And the theme of the conference uh, was to be epic, as you can see from all the flags that are uh, uh, surrounds us here. Yeah. And since uh, I was the one who built this central area, uh, and it was a Japanese garden theme, so I decided to dress up in the old traditional Japanese samurai uh, outfit uh, to fit with the theme. And uh, that is one of the marvels of Second Life also, uh, or any virtual environment is that you can basically be whatever you want to be. I wish I can dress like this sometimes in the <laughs> That would be very lovely. Yes, yes. but uh, it's, it's mostly uh, to fit the theme, uh, because during the three days of the conference, I would uh, be here or attend the keynote spe uh, speeches uh, dressed in this very epic and, and thematic fashion. Yes, I, I think um, it's a very nice place. I'm seeing very organized. How much does it uh, this took you to to get ready built? Oh, this area it took us um, two and a half weeks. Uh, we work. got we got started a little slow, and of course, uh, this is really my first time ever building for the conference on this scale. Um, so we had to, and also, uh, you can't see it now, but we used, the space used to be twice as big. And, and this area, the central auditorium, actually spanned two uh, CMR simulators. And when you span two uh, sims, you run into some other technical uh, difficulties. Um, that actually was the first time I had ever encountered it. So in completing this build, I actually learned quite a bit. Uh, that I didn't know before, and and, and that's why Second Life, um, I mean, opportunities to learn and, and expand uh, are everywhere. Um, so, personally, myself, I actually had a very good time beyond just attending the conference, but also building the facility for everyone else to use. I learned in, in doing that, and I also uh, helped to support you know, other educators around the world uh, to have a venue to come and share their ideas and what they've learned and the best practices uh, for virtual world education and virtual worlds. I see that in these little boxes there is like certificate of the assistant of the people. Is this yes. correct? Oh. Um, actually, that was put out by um, a German named Pilan, and it is a certificate of appreciation for all the volunteers that helped uh, to make this conference possible. And uh, I believe he said there were, I don't remember how many hundreds of certificate he had put out. And there were some on the other side that is actually now gone because uh, the lease on that 
dancing was uh, only through March. As you can see, there were many people that were involved in making it possible. All the volunteers were from all over the world. The area, the, the scene that you see that it surrounds this, the mountains and whatnot, was actually created by a gentleman in the United Kingdom. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you have some uh, of the build team that was in the United States and some were in another country and the time differences, we worked it out. But that, again, just goes to illustrate the, the power of the environment uh, because you're not limited by time and space anymore. You know, we can work together at the same time or we can do our own part and those who can work at their, doing their normal time can work on their different time normal time, but all contribute to, you know, the final result, uh, which was a successful conference. And I understand it that the conference attendance for the unique avatars that they went, uh, it could be up as high as 3,400 who attended. I, I remember very well that we met there because I saw your Abby, you saw mine, and then <laughs> you started yeah. talking about education, that is something that exactly. it was never crossing my mind that I would have the, the chance to talk about somebody from Texas University and tell me all these experience that you have with people all around the world with uh, creativity is actually multiplied because everybody's giving the best of their own in a very emotional way too. Uh, you're, you're absolutely correct and you know although this is a virtual environment all the participants um, be they volunteer or, or the, the organizing committee or the presenters themselves um, you can tell that they put their heart and soul into it, and it's, it's dedication. You can see the dedication for all the participants. Um, as, as I'm sure you've seen some of the award uh, at the award ceremony to recognize the outstanding uh, volunteers this year. Um, there are people who spent many, many hours uh, working to make this possible. Um, but without the environment, there wouldn't be an opportunity for those to actually put in that work uh, to make it uh, possible. And then, of course, it needs the vision of all the users um, to think that this is something like a 3,000, 3,500 uh, participant conference can actually work in a virtual environment. Oh, this is just amazing. Easy, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for the opportunity and, <laughs> and for the opportunity to share.